that song, and you're about to find out why. Uh, hello and welcome everybody. It's so good to see all of you here today as you're coming on in. I met with a lot of you yesterday, so it's good to see you face to face where we can talk more about what I promised we would get to and uh, what's coming up here with Fort Myers, islands, beaches, and neighborhoods. So good to spend some time with you. I am Miriam Dotson, Communications Manager. Alongside today, you'll also meet Executive Director Tamara Pikett and Marketing Director Brian Osaski. Uh, we are excited to share more about our destination and talk to you about what makes it so unique. So, four starters. Let's get you going. That's what we look like, and we're here today. But let's get you on the map. So where in the beautiful state of Florida are we exactly? So as you can see, for starters, we are located in the southwest region of Florida. For reference, that's about two hours south of Tampa, about two hours just west of Miami. You've got some travel times on there too from some of the major airports to give you a little more perspective of how to get to Fort Myers in the area. On the Gulf side of the state of Florida, we pride ourselves on the natural beauty, spectacular sunsets, wide open spaces, historic sites, and so much more that the area has to offer. There are more than 100 different islands, more than 50 miles of white sand beaches. And it's not just what you see and experience when you come to our destination, but it's how you feel when you step foot in our slice of paradise. As many of you know, our paradise eight months ago was greatly impacted by Hurricane Ian one of the worst storms on record to ever hit the state of Florida. You may have seen images, heard stories, and wonder how a world-class destination comes back after such a natural disaster. And that's why we really wanted you to hear it from us, those who have been there, those who have been living it, and find out what's really going on and where we currently stand. Our destination's response and recovery are critical and important parts of moving forward. I know the news cycle moves fast. I'm a former journalist talking to a room full of journalists from all around the world. So I do understand that personally. And it's important that you know that we are not only ready to welcome visitors, but we are stronger than ever as a community. And that's what keeps our heartbeat going. There's no doubt we were tested. And we continue to face some challenges. Everywhere does. But the resiliency and optimism is unmatched after facing that. The tourism community did not hesitate to work together immediately. From tourism partners to the residents who live and breathe and live for this area, to the outpouring of love from the visitors who are loyal to us and love coming back over and over again, it has been so inspiring to see what we can all do when we all work together. You'll hear more about those stories in just a moment. Currently, there are 10,000 hotel rooms available for visitors. That's 10,000 for a number that it keeps increasing every day. There are businesses reopening every single day, and there are new businesses coming in and wanting to plant their roots there. For example, coffee shops and art galleries in downtown Fort Myers, new restaurants in the city of Cape Coral, and for the record, many and most of our beaches are currently open. Your voice, your broadcast, article, video, social media posts, how you communicate, it really makes a difference in this world. And to expand more on that point, I'd like to introduce our Director of Marketing with Fort Myers Islands, Beaches and Neighborhoods, Brian Osaski, to tell you a little bit more about the role the international visitor plays in our recovery. Brian. Thanks, Miriam. And I echo what Miriam said about our resiliency and optimism. We are all very proud of what our destination has accomplished over the last eight months. And the most important message that we hope you take away from all of this today, we are ready for international visitors to come to Fort Myers. Visitors aren't only an important part of our economy, they're also an important part of our community, of our personality, and who we are as a destination. I'll even take that one step further. Visitors are necessary, an integral part of our recovery. It's almost like they're not just visiting here, they belong here. We want to ensure that everyone who sees or hears this message, your viewers, your listeners, your readers, understand that they're not only welcome, but that we're extending the invitation 
to come and know that they are valued members of our community while in town. I'd like to quickly take a look back and provide some context around the phased approach that we're taking through recovery. In the three months immediately following the storm, we were in the hope and resilient phase, providing destination status and projected reopening updates. We were sharing information while maintaining top of mind awareness, <coughs> offering forward momentum and optimism, but at that point in time, not actively inviting visitors. As we turned the corner into the new year, we shifted to the curiosity and admiration phase, making sure that our loyalists know that the destination is bouncing back quickly. And we do have loyal visitors, not only from the Northeast and Midwest United States, yeah, but also from our oh-so-important international markets like Canada, Germany, and the UK. Our message was that while things may not be normal just yet, the way our area makes people feel has not changed, and there's definitely an opportunity to have an enjoyable vacation experience here. Where we are now is the excitement and anticipation phase. We're encouraging all types of travelers to visit, knowing that the destination is rebuilding and even improving upon our prior condition in many ways. Visitors are beginning to get excited to see all the new developments that are being made. And as we look to the future into 2024 and beyond, we'll be back better than ever in the confidence and desire phase, continuing to inspire people through our resiliency and continuing to connect travelers with all the reasons there are to visit. Tourism businesses throughout the greater Fort Myers area are working hard to make sure you're going to have a good experience despite Hurricane Ian. From families, to couples, to singles, we want everyone to know that we are ready to welcome and accommodate them. One of the ideas we're embracing, one of the many positives that has actually come out of going through Hurricane Ian, is the idea of voluntourism. So if someone wants to not only visit Fort Myers, but to be more involved, more hands-on in our recovery efforts. They can volunteer while in town. Cleanup efforts with Keep Lee County Beautiful. Environmental projects with the Rotary Park Envi Environmental Center. Join the Coastal Watch cleanup crew to help remove debris from conservation areas. Or sign up with the United Way and their Gifts in Kind program. Every little bit helps. And when international guests fly into Southwest Florida International Airport, airport code RSW, that's going to be a positive experience as well. Listen to this. The staff at Travel Lens, a digital publication dedicated to travel articles about worldwide destinations, the best hotels, restaurants, cafes, bars, and more, recently pitted the 50 busiest U.S. airports against one another to find the best in the country based on a range of factors including wait times, passenger satisfaction, and even CO2 emissions. The fact that RSW came out on top should be no surprise. For the most part, anyone who has traversed Southwest Florida International Airport knows that it's welcoming and really easy to get around. And we're proud of that. Being number one is a good thing. Speaking of being welcoming, for arriving flights from Frankfurt, our passengers are greeted by German-speaking volunteers who are there to assist them while going through customs. I'll leave you with this. We are here, we are open, and we are ready for visitors right now. Things are continuously getting better, with more and more exciting things coming online literally every single day. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our leader, the Executive Director for Fort Myers Islands, Beaches, and Neighborhoods, Tamara Pygett. Thank you, Brian, and, and hello, everyone. So nice to see your faces today. I know most of you spoke with Miriam yesterday, but I'm especially happy to have this opportunity to talk to you. The story of resiliency is very much woven into our hearts in Fort Myers. It's really been incredible. 
watching everyone come together to keep moving forward, literally picking up the pieces and restoring our paradise. We've always had a healthy respect for Mother Nature, more so now. It's really part of what makes our area so special. Our commitment to sustainability and wildlife is well known, but it is our people who make visitors want to keep coming back again and again. Our local businesses got creative. For example, restaurants put food trucks in their parking lots while they worked on their buildings. The famous decadent bubble room cake on Captiva is now being served at the Broadway Palm Dinner Theater in Fort Myers. Several Sanibel businesses have opened temporarily in the Bell Tower shops in Fort Myers. Pictured here is Rob White, the owner of Fort Myers Brewing. He turned his food truck into a mobile laundromat. He quickly learned laundry was a difficult option for many without power. So he replumbed his food truck to hook up a washer and dryer, and he served hundreds by driving it to various neighborhoods that had need. He also started a sock drive and donated thousands of pairs of socks to the families and workers. It's interesting what you find out you really need during a challenging time. Clean socks. Krista Kowalczyk, a Sanibel photographer, helped people recover and restore invaluable family photos that had water damage by scanning them, digitizing, and electronically repairing them. Her outreach gained support from universities and photography groups all around the world. This is Nick Adams and his family. Despite their business being destroyed and their home being severely damaged, they used their remaining boat and equipment to survey damage for people on Sanibel Island unable to make it to the island themselves, offering them invaluable information on the condition of their property. Restaurant owner Peter Innes was ready to open his restaurant on September 28th. And you saw from Marion, that is the day Hurricane Ian made landfall. The restaurant survived the storm, which allowed him to join with the community in helping his and other businesses reopen as quickly as possible. And here's Matthew and Amber Lopes, owners of Elite Adventure Rentals, a jet ski company. Instead of giving tours on the water, the couple immediately switched gears and use their jet skis to deliver food and supplies to those in need. These are not average people. These are incredible people who make up the Fort Myers community. They are people who look forward to welcoming visitors, and they are the reason we are so confident that we can get through anything. It's how the community responded that proves we are going to come back stronger. Now I'd like to introduce you to a few more businesses on the road to recovery who will share more about what's coming next. Take, let's take a look at this video. Oz is the story